Hey folks, got this little Hondo here. Oh nine says it's the fit. Uh, it was towed in. The lady said, according to her message, that she had had some mechanical problems and didn't dare drive it here, so she had it towed. So I started up and drove it in. I'll show you what it sounds like. <laughs> Pretty classic sound. Uh, that is the sound of a spark plug falling out, getting blown out, unscrewed itself out. Something happened there. 161 on the clock. So let's have a little gander under the hood. I haven't looked there yet. I wanted to do it together. So all I did is start driving in. I do get a little waft of gas here as I walk around. Smells like gas under here. Let me go get a tripod. I thought the coils were going to be a little more accessible, but well, I might have to take some jiggly bits off there. If it blew one out, that might not be a very fun repair. With this thing here. Um, let me get a flashlight and we'll fire it up and we'll verify that that is A, what we're hearing and then B, we'll have to see how to how to get to everything. Um, kind of unfamiliar with these ones. I picked her up on the lift a little bit so we don't have to keep bending over. I think, yes there, I thought I looked back here, I can see ignition coils and I can. I can see one, two, three, four. And you see if we see any anomalies here, if any of them are. Yeah, one of these things doesn't belong here. It looks like the number two. This is gonna be kind of a difficult video to record. Um, so I guess I'll bring you guys over here to the side. It's pretty much the area that I need to work in, but we'll see what we can figure out here. So looking back here, it looks like, I'm just gonna do this by feel, I'm guessing. Reach back here, it feels like that's number one. This is number two. It looks like it is sitting kind of cockeyed. Let's see if I get it unplugged. Okay, I've got it unplugged. Let me grab a 10 mil, I assume that's what that is. We'll take that one out because that's one that looks kind of funny. I guess we could plug in a scan tool also. Because the engine light was on, we could see what code was in it. If it's a 302 code, which I imagine from the looks of this, but. Hopefully, for this girl's sake, it blew the center out of the spark plug or unthreaded it because could be quite a difficult job to try to put a thread insert in that. Maybe this uh, wiper cowl comes off and, and allows this access. I don't know. We'll find out here in a moment. Okay, got the bolt out. I've got the coil out. Yeah, and, and this uh, this coil is rock hard. That's kind of peculiar. Is that porcelain? Maybe, maybe it is. Oh, it felt like it's looks like it's all chowdered up. I thought I heard the spark plug roll around back there. Let's get a little rubber spark plug starting tool. Let's just kind of go fishing around here. Let's find the hole first. Oh no, I feel, never mind, I feel something. Okay, I felt this. <laughs> this is laying at the top of the hole. That's interesting. Kind of peculiar. That uh, must be the rest of the spark plug boot, probably. Goes on there like so. Oh yeah, it did it kind of cracked the uh, edge of the coil too as it was blowing up out of the hole. All right. So well, that's some of what we've discovered. Let me have a little gander back here with the mirror. I guess we could get back here with our little camera. Let's uh, see what I can see with this first of all, which is actually quite a bit surprisingly. 
Okay, there's nothing else down in that hole. So that's good. So let's try this. Because the spark plug doesn't appear to be damaged, you know, thread-wise, I don't see a bunch of aluminum jammed in it. We're gonna come back here and see if it will thread itself. Let's see what size socket it takes first. See, we'll see if it will thread itself back in to the cylinder head here. And it starts about a thread, then it it doesn't feel 100% right. And that could be because it's been in there kind of banging around on those top threads. Mm. Yeah, I don't like how it feels. It feels about like one thread and then it uh, gets kind of funky. Which I don't know if that's in the plug or if that's in the head. But instead of reaching back here and uh, getting this thing screwed up, um, I'm going to do some poking. We'll see if this, oh, <laughs> we'll see if this thing comes off which it's already yeah this is almost all broke already so uh, i think that answers our question here i'll take the one clip off that holds this on maybe somebody's been back here i don't know yeah, this, this piece is on top of that piece all right well i do know the wiper arms need to come off so let's get those yanked off Huh, this, this bolt here, look at this. There's a nut for the wiper, huh? This job just gets easier and easier. <laughs> look at that. All right, I think we're starting to answer some of our questions here. Well, that one, we're not quite as lucky. That one's not quite finger tight, but let me get a 14. We'll get that wiper arm off, and then we'll take some more of this plastic off, but it appears that at some point in this car's life, somebody has been here. All right, there's that. So this side's not too bad. Yeah, it's got one, two, couple broken tabs across the top. This thing here's kind of jammed down. Oh yeah, I guess that's where that's supposed to be, but definitely gonna have to get some parts and pieces if we want to put together properly. Gonna set that where it belongs. All right, it does appear that we can take the wiper transmission and stuff out and get a little bit more room back here. We might have to pull the intake manifold to really see what's going on. But let's get this uh, big piece of tin out of there and then we can have a little look-see. the wiper motor transmission assembly it's just a four bolts to hold that thing in and it looks like a bunch more six millimeter bolts holding this thing in Tell you what, folks, let's do this. Let's take let's take the number one out. Mother oh, boy, those things are tight. Let's just get this up out of there. Let's take the spark plug out of it. A for a couple reasons. We need to check them all anyways. And or replace them. And B will have a known good spark plug. So we can tell how things are supposed to look. Um, not really how things are supposed to look, but we can tell if we need to uh, run a thread chaser in that hole or if the spark plug's what's frigged up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this one was pretty loose. 
So it must be somebody put spark plugs in it at some point and then never torqued them to factory specs, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, dude? Because that was quite loose. I mean, it looks like the washer's crushed on it, but it must have been a little ginger. A little too ginger. Yep, so that doesn't want to thread in there. Let me just try something against my better judgment. got just a teeny tiny ratchet here because if you don't want something to break use a brass hammer and a small ratchet let's just see nope okay so that feels like it doesn't feel great that's what it feels like it feels like it doesn't feel great <laughs> let's pull that back out before we make a mess out of that make sure it threads down in this hole and it does okay so now we know what we need to know I just wondered if that first thread what might have been boogered and you give it just a little push and then you know way to go it goes past it everybody's happy lunch time okay i'm gonna take i'm gonna just grab the belt here on the engine i need to crank the engine over just a little bit the piston is all the way at the top turn baby yeah. I just wanted to turn the engine a little bit to get the piston to go down a little bit because I'm going to do a little exploring down in that hole. I think it's a 14 millimeter by 150. I think that's what thread they are. I've got these weird thread expander doodad things. I don't know what to say. What's up, Miss Zell? Lunch is ready. Is you it really? Whistle? I heard it. How come you're not in any of your lunch? Wow. I will remember that. Okay? <laughs> Mark my words. I'll remember that. Oh, I know. Well, we survived lunch, so that's good. I've got a 14 millimeter reverse, I guess you would call it a reverse thread chaser. So what this does is this is all tapered down here. You go all the way in the hole. You tighten this little guy up. And that expands that out to your regular 14 millimeter thread like your spark plug then we can thread it theoretically from inside the hole out because the outside of the threads is kind of what's boogered up but theoretically and hopefully the inside thread is not so the one closest to the piston if that makes sense so this is what we're going to attempt to do i see we left this here i guess we can leave that there and then uh, we'll give this a go well i'm going to try to do this by feel we're in the right one we are oh boy so this might be a tad bit of a problem because it's it's recessed so far down yikes so let's try this I'm going to try to expand it yeah I didn't think about that that's uh, this design works okay except well that's interesting it seems to be writing in there oh never mind okay it's because I didn't have it fully expanded it did start it did start I was just seeing if I could get it started but when I'm trying to spin it back out all I'm doing is loosening up the loosening up the arbor which wouldn't be good because it can't actually come apart so I'm going to tighten it up all the way I'm going to see if we can start it down inside that hole, which it seems to start quite easily. Um, yeah, so this seems to, it seems like it's threading right down in, really, without any big issue. I don't want to go all the way <clears throat> because it's hard to kind of hang on to <clears throat> once it drops through the thread. So I bet the threads really aren't that messed up. <clears throat> I don't know if I have another 14 millimeter thread chaser here. Let me look and see if I do because I doubt what we just did cleared anything up. Um, 
So that's interesting. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna take the spark plug. <clears throat> this is the original one that came out of this hole. I'd be willing to bet it just has a little bit of a booger up on top of the threads. pushed it a little bit more than I would have normally so I, I think we're good because now I can thread it out by hand yeah it just had that I think a little bit of a spot up on top simply because you know it was blown out and who knows this thing was probably migrating out over time got to the last thread and then you know maybe like kinked off a little bit um, I did order some new spark plugs while I was eating my lunch so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these two out that we already have out. I'm gonna go get the new ones. We're gonna put them in. We're gonna torque them down to factory specs. And then we'll do the other two. Make sure we don't have any problem. And I also ordered a new ignition coil. Whether or not these are the OG, I don't really know. We have our brand new laser iridium NGKs. We'll get this one started. Ended up being kind of a silly video, but I was hoping it was going to be something more epic. In a way, I'm kind of glad we don't have to repair this hole, just given where it is. We've already done a video on repairing a stripped out spark plug hole. I think I did a video on that many, many years ago. Maybe I'm wrong on this one. Uh, can't tell. Tell you what, let me stick a ratchet on this because I can't tell if I'm clicking past some threads in there. Let's just see, because we didn't we didn't screw that other spark plug in all the way. This this doesn't, this doesn't feel right, dude. Make sure this one feels right. This may go full epic on us. Maybe that's why that thing is threaded in there. I think it's I think it's missing all the threads. If I had to guess, because that's why our thread chaser was going in so easy. Yeah. You bet you, buddy. I, I think this thing's missing all of its threads. Is I think is what's happened here. That is why that was spinning in so easy. And then when we stuck the spark plug in there, we give it that little push. There might have only been a thread or two at the very top. Okay, so oh, what a stink pot this is going to be. I mean, a real stink pot because we can't see it. I can't anyways and I believe even if I pull the intake manifold it's not going to give me much of an advantage so I think we have to do this one blind let's get a video camera look down in that hole see if we can verify are we missing the threads which I think we are so we're going to use our little endoscope here uh, actually I'll set it where I can where I can see and then I'll, uh, I'll move you guys around here. This thing's getting pretty beat up. She's been down some hot spark plug holes and she's pretty melted. Uh, I think it's still good though. I think the screen on it is cracked here, but it may be good enough for us to see. And then I'll move you guys over here where you can see and everybody can see. Oh yeah, she's just a bare naked hole. And I believe the threads that we were feeling were not the threads at the top, but perhaps the actual only threads left in the bottom of the hole. So let me move you over. I tell you what, just to give you guys a reference, in case you're not that experienced of looking down in the hole, we'll look down a good one here. I'll show you what that looks like. And then we'll look down the bad one. 
I'll show you what that looks like. And then we've got to come up with some kind of plan for this young lady. I have no idea how good this is gonna work out. Just got you guys pointing at the camera here. I'll see if I can. Okay, so we're going in the good hole. Let's see. Kind of makes it kind of difficult here, but let's see. Let's just have an overall look. So there's what the threads look like as we go down through. We're going all the way. There's our cylinder. There's the top of the piston, and that's the inlet side. So that side points towards the intake valves. And as we come up through, you can see all the threads there. Hopefully you guys can tell. But there's threads there. And then we go over to the number two hole. And it appears like there's threads. So you guys will see that and be like, bro, those are threads. Well, they're what's left of the threads. And you can see this little tiny lip here on the bottom, right? There, we're just about poking into it. I think that's what we were feeling when we stuck the spark plug in and started to turn it, is they were the last remaining, oops, you know, the remaining little bit of a thread at the bottom that was, that was it. And there's our piston on its way down. Um, God dang. So there is no, there is no threads left. I mean, there's some, but it's just the outer, outer bits of them. So that kind of stinks. Uh, yep. And then like, again, you know, this is a good one. Darn, 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 darny, darn. And uh, unenhance, unenhance. And you can actually hear it. I don't know if, you'll, if you guys are, if the camera will pick this up, but you can hear. I'll stick this in the hole and you'll hear the threads go like this. They'll make that sound as they're slipping past the other threads in there. Hear that? That's me sticking it all the way in. And then it hits hits bottom on the washer. So, so, so buttons on my underwear. We're screwed. Literally screwed. Well, this is it, folks. Uh, we get one chance, one shot to make this work. Uh, the options here are A, replace the engine. <laughs> B, replace the cylinder head. Uh, C, remove the cylinder head, take it to a machine shop and have it repaired, or D, the option we're going with, try to DIY it, fix it ourselves. We're going to use a helicoil. So we're using a 14 millimeter helicoil spark plug repair kit. This is the tap that it comes with. So it self pilots in that tap on the original 14 millimeter thread, and then it's going to auger it out on the way in. We've got some tap magic made for aluminum. We're going to use some of that. We'll get it all over everything here. All right. And then we're gonna reach back here. Make darn toot and we're going in the right hole. I put the spark plug in the other hole so we don't make that mistake. You wouldn't want to make a fine tap job on the wrong hole. I'll tell you that. I'm gonna grab a different extension. Get that inserted in there. One thing I can tell you when you're doing this is you make darn tootin' that your uh, piston is out of the way. You don't want to make that mistake. I'm going to pull this extension out. I might have to go get a different one. I kind of want to use a longer one. This is a wobble head extension. I'd like to use a, a fixed straight one. That's a little too long. Let me go get a shorter one. And then we're going to run this baby home. The part that kind of stinks about this is, is I can't see it. All right, I know you guys can see, but all I can see is the end of my extension. I did move the piston down further than what we had it originally. This feels like it's biting very, very nicely. If you're a machinist, you're going to want to close your eyes.
spin that out. And that should be it, folks. We should have cut threads. We're gonna have a look down in there. It does look like we cut threads all the way because the hole is quite a bit larger than it was when we started because we have to, you can probably see on this tap as we went down in, it cuts it, you know, obviously to a bigger size, maybe 16 millimeter from 14, you know, steps up there. All right, we got a blow nozzle. Get a blow nozzle here. Bend, we're going to go all the way down in the spark plug hole. If you don't want to bend your blow nozzle, go get one from your buddy. They bend back, trust me. They usually do. Let's see. Okay, well, there we go. We're going all the way. If you're going down in there with a blow nozzle, before you do, take a look down in there with your camera, with your side camera. This camera has a side camera. Make sure your valves are closed. Because if they're not, well, you're gonna get a lot of those comments in the comments section saying how you're doing it wrong. But that's okay. Um, if, if you do miss a little piece of aluminum, uh, rest assured you'll be okay. Let's get a thread insert, get her down in there. So we're gonna use this tool here. This is a universal insert installer. I don't know, it's got, it said, just has a US patent number on it, but it's what it's called, the universal insert installer. And here is our 14 millimeter helicoil insert. So these are a solid sleeve, they're knurled at the top. We're gonna to stick it on this thing. Then we're gonna tighten that up. And that's going to hold it for us so we can get in there and go we can go all the way we're going all the way folks we're going to put some red loctite on this we're going to spray some brake clean in that hole we're going to give it a blast again we're going to go down there with the camera we're going to have a look at it so everybody's happy we're all on the same page and then we're going to red loctite this we're going to spin it down then we're going to take this tool out and where it's knurled here we've got another tool we're going to go in there and kind of peen it over to make it attach permanently Going in with a brake clean. Just gonna give her a little toot here. Oh yeah, there's a little toot for you. Oh, there's a little toot for you. Let's get our blow nozzle here again. Oh, and down. Of course, I already straightened it out, but we just want to blow off the threads. We get the camera. Let's see if I can zoom you guys in again. Let's have a gander back. Whoop! Lost ya. See if I can sit you back up here. Hold still. I'll just hold ya. Pop, pop, I'll hold ya. Just a minute. Because we don't have to look down deep. Okay. Let's see. So there you are. So there's what our hole looks like now. She's all threaded out. I don't know if I can get us down in there. Okay. You don't see a bunch of metal shavings sitting in there in the parts that you can see. So if that makes you feel better, a little better about yourself, we'll come back up and out. Our threads are nice and we did cut them all the way. So the other important thing too, as far as making sure your valves are uh, closed, is not just when you go in there with a blow nozzle, um, which I know, you know most of you wouldn't do, you would get a vacuum cleaner adapter and, and go in there, which is fine. But the thing about keeping the valves closed is, uh, you know to keep the aluminium from blowing back up the intake and out the exhaust and stuff but it's also to make sure your tap doesn't hit it remember some some valves will open very very close to that spark plug opening and that would be a bad day my guy if you ran your little deal into that so again we've got our insert tool on here we're going to use some ooh some orange goo some orange loctite. I don't believe this is really necessary, but this is to keep the critics at bay on YouTube. Orange is the new red, man. Strong as red, removes like blue. But like I say, I don't think it's really necessary. It gets hot enough that it doesn't really matter. Plus we peen it in there. So we're going down 
the number two hole. We're gonna twirl that baby till we get to the knurled portion of it. And worst case scenario, this insert will stick to the spark plug. And a boy. Hammering on the old jig. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna tighten up the arbor as tight as I can get it and try to make darn tootin' that she's in all the way. Feels like it is. At least that's as tight as we can get it using a friction hold here. Now I'm gonna release the arbor, unscrew the outer portion here, push it in, unscrew it some more, push it in and remove our tool. So there's our tool. There's our pretty simple device. Have to straighten that little guy up. Well, I'll get that in a minute. Set that to the side. We'll turn this back on. And we'll go in there together. You and I will. Let me enhance. Enhance. Is that good enough for you guys to see? Let's see. Probably should do it so I can see, you know, make sure I'm not messing up this car. Let me give her a little tweak back here. I just need to make sure it looks like it's in flush. So I actually need to see it at this point. It appears that the top edge is flush. I do like the looks of that. She went down good. There's our thread. You can still see some of the remaining threads where we tapped it, but we're pretty much full length in that hole. All right, so now it's time to pull out an enhance. Now we're going in with this little guy. So this is going to go in. It's going to kind of pile it. Here, let's get another insert. I'll show you. <coughs> Here's our insert we just put in there. There's the knurled part. See how it's got the little flange up on the top? So no flange on this side. A little bit of a flange on this side. This baby's gonna pile it in there. And we're gonna go in and give this thing a few whacks. And this is just slightly tapered. The edge of this is, okay? We give that a few whacks, it's gonna drive those knurls out into the head, theoretically. Okay, cause you can see it's a little bit wobbly on there, but we need to get that started. Just a couple whacks. It's just gonna expand this outer lip up here where it's a little bit thinner. I guess that's the best way I can explain it to you. And to do so, it's a little difficult because we can't really get back there and whack on it. I took a 17 mil 12 point, okay? We're gonna use some tape. And no job complete unless you're using some tape. It's just gonna be easier to, that way we can feel around back there. We'll wrap some tape on this. Wrap some tape around our socket. Pull it like that. We're gonna come back here. You just gotta feel for it. The problem may be is my 17 mil socket may not fit in the spark plug tube, so we're gonna check it upside down. And it does not, so that's an epic fail. This guy is an idiot. Should check that first. Where'd the tape end? Where does it begin? Frank, gosh! There, now we're, uh, we'll go to plan B. Always, always have a plan B, I'll tell you that much. Because sometimes when you're doing stuff live on the tube, the YouTubes, that's what my mother-in-law calls it. How you, how you doing on your YouTubes, honey? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good, I tell her. I don't want to drop it in the hole, it should self-pilot. Well, I don't want to be down there whacking on it, finding out I'm in the wrong freaking spot. So let's uh, let's do something different. Um, okay, that actually sounds like I'm doing a little bit of business. feel like a little woodpecker back there. You know, we need is one of them palm nailers there that the uh, carpenter guys use and it's like, ah. you know, reach back here and just 
get rid of the beans. So let's pull this thing out. I don't know is if we can actually see if we made progress, as they say. I'm gonna have a little look and see if it looks any different. Can't really tell because it does go in, it does go in flush anyways. So it's really difficult to tell if, you know, if we were able to, you know, swedge that out into the head because essentially that's what it does. You know, that knurled portion here is actually down, you know, it's below, it's below the threads a little bit or it's just about flush with the outside of the threads, we'll say. So when you do swedge it, it doesn't really like, you know, mushroom out. Um, one way to tell would be you know, stick that insert tool back in there, tighten it up, try to unscrew it. But the fact of the matter is, if we put it in a plug, you know, the plug's gonna snug down, tighten down, flip, flatten out the washer, or the washer, as they like to say, and then tight is tight. And then worst case scenario, at, you know, 300,000 miles, when somebody does plugs again, if the insert were to come out, I mean, it's, in theory, they could just put it back on the spark plug and thread it back in. It's more like a, a bushing at this point but okay so there's that the spark plug is in the hole we're going to reach back here with a spark plug socket and we're going to give it its customary three quarters turn to flatten the flatten her out so let's see there's a quarter there's a half get her around town here kumbaya mother love that's three quarters. So that's three quarters of a turn from when she hit bottom. And before I forget, I'm gonna tighten up this one too. Kinda of sucks, we gotta order a bunch of plastic little clips and stuff from Hondu to put this thing back together. But at least she doesn't have to buy a whole engine or a cylinder head. So there's a quarter, there's a half, and there's three quarters and a little bit extra. And I know that is not factory spec. That's what it says on the spark plug box. We've tested this theory out in other videos, of course. Uh, we torqued the flat, these washer style spark plugs, apparently. So not your tapered seat, but the, the kind here that have the flat washer on them. We've uh, tested this theory uh, where we've actually torqued them to specs like for realsies. And we measured the amount of turns it was past seated. So the spark plug box will tell you to tighten it down, three quarters of a turn when it hits. You torque it to factory specs, it ends up somewhere between half and three quarters of a turn. So for what that's worth, who cares? Anyway, let's get the uh, other spark plugs out, change the other coil, and this lady will be on her way. In case anybody's wondering, I did get a new, uh, new coil. We're gonna use some silicone dielectric grease. Just a little dab in there. And I'll stick that one on. Like so. I'll get the other one in. I'll change those last two, which you don't need to see because that's boring. And then we'll make sure the car runs. All the spark plugs are changed. For the record, the other two cylinders, three and four, uh, finger tight, no tools needed to take them out. The coil, so, however, we're tight enough to the, the fourth one, number four gave me a little bit of pause. I thought the bolt was gonna snap off, but it came out. So they had the coils super tight, spark plugs are falling out. Let's uh, fire this thing up. She's a three pedal jobby, so I gotta get in here. Hang on, just a minute, folks. That's it, easy fix. Just gotta wait till 
Well, I'm probably gonna go on the computer and look up the clips and all that crap that we need that were all broke here. And then, I guess, just put it back together. But that was it, easy peasy, easy fix, man. Here's the kit I use for Sparky's, uh, for 14 mils anyways. It's from Napa. Uh, I don't even know if it's still available. I've had this kit a long time. Uh, it's so it's for the 14125. I've got a lot of different uh, thread <laughs> type kits, you know, helicoil kits. This one's actually made by helicoil. Save a thread, your classic 7703408. And then I keep her stocked up. Gives you the directions there. And then you got the short reach, normal reach, long reach. The long reach are the ones we use the most. You can see I got a big package of those. I don't think I've ever used the short ones. I don't think so. Never use those little guys. They're pretty pretty shallow, like my jokes. And then uh, these are your normal reach, which we've used lots of them. But uh, I just buy you know new packages of these and then just replenish them. This is actually a new pack, and I think this is one left over from the old pack. I had one shoved here, one shoved there, and that's what we used. And they're good bits of kit to have around the shop. 14 mils, pretty popular. Blow the dust off it. Just kind of a refresher like our last broken bolt video we did on that Chevrolet. You know, I was showing you guys how to remove the broken studs, how to, you know, tap out the holes and helicoil them when it's, you know, no threads, when there's a helicoil in, when there's a bolt broke off halfway in it, you know, and how to do that and repair that. So this is just another, you know, review of a thread video. This is pretty uh, classic, pretty textbook, uh, pretty easy to get to except you can't see it you know so we're just going in blind fortunately we got a nice camera to look back there which is cool and like i say i've done a video on this way back in the day i think it was on a cobalt or a neon or something there where the engines are up top and we could get some good camera angles on it and all that and maybe we did one on a ford too but i don't know it's always good to kind of review because a lot of you guys are new some of you guys are old but all of you are cool <laughs> What do you think about that? Be cool in that comment section. Questions, comments, Insta, the Facebook. If you see us on TikTok, that's not us. That's an imposter. Lion, he's not me. So, um, somebody told me they saw me on TikTok. I don't have a TikTok. Hi, kitty. Come here. That's Luna. She's over there, good kitty. And uh, just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.